Von Hippel-Lindau, or VHL, is a genetic disease that affects people of all ethnicities and is characterized by tumor development in the central nervous system, kidneys, adrenal glands, and pancreas. Alright, the VHL gene is a tumor suppressor gene on the short arm of chromosome 3. It codes for proteins that degrade hypoxia-inducible transcription factor, or HIF. HIF upregulates genes that code for platelet-derived and vascular endothelial growth factors both of which promote new blood vessel formation and cell growth. In VHL disease, this tumor suppressor gene is mutated, which increases HIF, PDGF, VEGF, and ultimately the risk of tumor formation. VHL disease is about as common as Huntington disease, happening in 1 in 36,000 people. It's inherited in an autosomal dominant pattern, meaning that a VHL patient has a 50% chance of passing it on to each kid they have. 20% of VHL patients have a de novo, or new mutation, meaning they're the first VHL patient in their family. Alright, the most common tumor type in VHL is hemangioblastoma, a benign blood vessel tumor happening in about 60% of VHL patients. In the central nervous system, these can happen in the retina, brain, and spinal cord. In the eyes, it can cause blindness by detaching the retina. In the brain and spinal cord, a tumor or the accompanying cyst causes problems when it pushes against surrounding tissue. For example, if the tumor is in the cerebellum, it can cause ataxia, or the loss of balance. If it blocks the flow of cerebrospinal fluid, intracranial pressure can rise, causing headaches, nausea, and vomiting. Less common are benign cysts and cyst-like tumors called cyst adenomas. The most concerning, happening in about 25% of VHL patients, is the endolymphatic sac tumor of the inner ear which can cause deafness. Cyst adenomas can develop in the broad ligament in women and the epididymis in men. And incidental cysts can happen in the liver, lung, kidney, and pancreas in both men and women. Some tumors associated with VHL can be cancerous. Clear cell renal cell carcinoma, or RCC, happens in about 60% of VHL patients and can develop in both kidneys. Pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors grow in about 15% of VHL patients and can also metastasize. Two other typically benign endocrine tumors happening in about 20% of VHL patients are pheochromocytomas in the adrenal glands, and when they're found elsewhere, they're called paragangliomas. These tumors erratically pump catecholamines like norepinephrine and epinephrine, and individuals might present with sudden symptoms of sympathetic overactivity like headaches, sweating, palpitations, and hypertension. A pheocrisis can happen when catecholamine levels are extremely high and can be fatal. VHL patients on average develop their first lesion by their mid-20s, but the age of onset varies with the lesion type. For example, hemangioblastomas usually happen earlier in life than renal cell carcinoma tumors. Not every VHL patient will get every type of VHL lesion, but they'll almost always get at least one. And since new lesions can develop repeatedly in the same organs, regular surveillance is crucial for improving quality of life and lifespan. Treatment recommendations are designed to preserve the function of the organ, and again depend on tumor type. For example, if you surgically remove RCC every time it appears, even when it was small and asymptomatic, VHL patients might quickly require dialysis. But once the cancer is about 3 centimeters, the high risk of metastasizing justifies the surgery. Retinal hemangioblastomas, however, should be treated when found, because each laser treatment does not cause appreciable vision loss. Alright, as a quick recap. Von Hippel-Lindau is an autosomal dominant disease caused by mutation in the VHL gene on chromosome 3. This leads to unregulated high levels of hypoxia-inducible factor, which causes tumor formation. VHL patients can develop lesions in many different organs, including the eye, ear, brain, spinal cord, kidneys, pancreas, and adrenal glands. Most of these are benign tumors, but they also have the potential to become metastatic, like bilateral clear cell renal cell carcinoma and pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. Because VHL is highly penetrant and the lesions can happen repeatedly throughout a person's lifetime, routine screening and careful management is crucial.